is KFAN News with Chris Hockey, presented by the St. Paul Saints. Good morning, Zach Calverson in for Chris Hockey. And again, thank you to the St. Paul Saints for the, uh, the, the old, news. The news, the KFAN news. They are in action. Uh, that will be tomorrow. Uh, out on the road, they're uh, back in Indianapolis for a little while. That's where I was last week, last uh, Monday. Uh, but they're coming off a big thirteen to eleven win over the Iowa Cubs yesterday. Sorry, Dubs, but you oh. suck. Well, that's me. <laughs> I said sorry, <laughs> Alexis. Uh... How do you feel about Zach flying to the totality last Monday just to see the uh, the solar eclipse? He did that? He did, yeah. Yeah. He flew to Indianapolis for less than one day and then came back. Live your life, man. Okay. That's the right answer. Best thing I ever did. Just curious. Was I what? stand by that How, move and I will forever. Where on your list would a bath in Las Vegas rank? Right behind the totality? Not right behind. Close, though. But close. I mean, it's in the same conversation. But I'm you leading. see the moon, right? I'm leading with the, <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you, you go over the moon, and right? There's, there's definitely totality going on. Yeah. That, okay. Your toes curl. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Authorities are warning Minnesotans <laughs> to avoid open burning wherever possible as the fire danger remains high in most of the state. The Department of Natural Resources fire danger map shows western and southern Minnesota with a very high risk of fire with only the northeast corner of the state considered at moderate risk. The National Weather Service issued red flag warnings for several areas over the weekend due to dry, windy conditions. A fire weather watch will be in in effect today in southwestern Minnesota. So... Do you remember Danger Mouse? Danger Mouse. Wasn't that a band? No, you're thinking of Modest Mouse. Oh, that's Modest Mouse. (laughs) Danger Mouse was a badass cartoon when we were growing up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Never heard of it. 1981. Yeah, yeah, Danger Mouse. I remember that. I I remember Mighty Mighty Mouse. Mighty Mouse was in in play as well, but Danger Mouse uh, I used to watch. I remember Mickey Mouse. You said Danger Mouse. Oh, really? Yeah. Not familiar. Not familiar. Disney Mm -hmm. character? Oh, he's that guy. Yeah. Danger Mouse is a producer, by the way. Is he really? Yep. And that, who's that, the, that has to be a reference to who's the, the other guy one. that wears the mouse mask. Marshmallow. That's dead mouse. <laughs> Marshmallow brilliant. That's mouse mellow. Did you see that, by the way? Oh, they just nice. did like a pop up surprise show at MOA on Saturday. Yes. I thought it was fake when yeah. I saw that at Wait, first. I was like, Marshmallow. Marshmallow, and... yeah. Yeah. So the, the place was packed. Yeah. I watched it twice. I was like, is this real? He <laughs> tweeted out like at 2 o'clock, hey, Mall America, 4 o'clock today, be there. And he. Yeah. If I was going to MOA <laughs> and walking my sweet ass to go out. get pretzels <laughs> yeah. and a marshmallow crowd blocked my pretzels, <laughs> I'd be so pissed. You wouldn't be able to get to the... the no. I mean, that crowd was massive. It was... Yeah, I got yeah. pretzels, obviously, at the Vegas airport, right? How was it? And that? Uh, we had a listener, a nice listener, come up and basically hand me his receipt, trying to give me pretzel points. But again, <laughs> they have me figured out. Annie Ann's in the app understands... You could just load up on pretzel points all day long and get free pretzels. So they only let you scan two mm. per location. So I took mine, and then the Rube had spent like eleven dollars. Well, our buddy engineer Jared had spent like fifteen. I got to make a smart pretzel points call at that point. So no offense to the listener who handed me his receipt. Thank you. You're gone. I'm taking the extra pretzel points. Yeah. I said, Jared, give me that receipt. And that concludes my pretzel point story. You also <laughs> scolded me for not having that one app at that one place. Y- yeah. You scolded me for that. Look, I- I- let me just say this. There are so many apps right now that give you so much free stuff, but everybody's worried about having their data. Who gives a rat's ass? What are they going to do with your data? I'm not afraid of that. I'm exactly. Don't fear Big Brother. <laughs> do you want free food almost nonstop? Get a whole bunch of these apps. <laughs> I don't need free food nonstop. <laughs> Why is he lecturing you? <laughs> Must be nice. He did lecture me. He was like, what? How do you not have this? And then There's both, so many good apps. But then we both went to our separate hotel rooms and ate, them, ate alone. 100%. We got food together and <laughs> yeah. go, well, see, see you later. later. <laughs> and I went up and ate alone. See you later. That's so, a so sign of real best friends. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. I love, there. there is not, this is a very weird statement. There's not a city in the world where it's more fun to get fast food and eat alone. 
Couldn't agree more. When we Ugh. every year we go to uh, couldn't agree more. Praise be. Oh man, every <laughs> year that we do the bit where we go to Circa, get hammered, and then yeah, I will go and get a ton of Taco Bell and then Facetime my wife, and half the time she go. You have cheese in your chest hair because I'm just hammered, hammering Taco Bell. You're eating shirtless. Oh, yeah, you have yeah. to. Why you would you gotta, take your right? shirt right? yeah. you got, You've got to use Taco Bell. Why well, are you wearing clothes in your hotel room? Right. Especially oh. Taco especially, Bell. And we if you all... want to take your shirt off and get into bed, fine, but don't you no. eat first? No. I'm not getting cheese you guys on my make sweatshirt. Weird no. Choice. no, that shirt, because when you're hammered, you're like, you know what make this a lot better? What? You yes. take your pants off, you take yeah. your shirt off. I don't as know about soon the as pants. you walk in. Yeah, I don't get down to your Why? You're alone in a hotel room. What do you need the pants yeah, for? You get down, I don't want to be undies. judged by Mario Lopez when I'm stuffing myself. <laughs> I do. I want Poor him to call me scum. Okay. Yeah. How that cool you off? <laughs> so you guys go to Vegas. Vegas so is known good. as one of the one of the better culinary cities in the U.S. Oh, yeah. And you guys are just... Well, Gallivanting look, around no, no, looking no. for I partake fast food in that. No, no, they got a Whataburger now. Yeah. They, so they, good. I partake Sasco's in that. normal adult Steak. things. Oh, yeah. Zach and I are disasters in any city we go to. So it's right. it's not about... Um, this, these are five star restaurants. It's which fast food joint is closest to your hotel that you can get to and get back to your hotel room so you can see what Mario Lopez wants you to watch. It's the latest. And we're talking when we're talking at, at an acceptable time. We're not talking at like four in the morning after the full night out. Well, you we're can do not that too, judging it all. No, here. no, no we're not, I mean, that, that makes sense. Whatever you want, that makes sense. Eat whatever you want, whenever you want. Exactly. Yeah. Las Vegas, Nevada. It's freedom. Yeah. It's just get those apps. So don't worry best. about uh, data. And now. Vegas gets it because if you don't have to say your order out loud and you just press it on a screen, oh man, you don't realize a how much you're getting and you don't feel the shame of them looking at you going, do you four? Need, do you need spoons? Do you need like, four cheese? Yeah, but, yeah, really? but they look at you weird when they give you the handle bag. Yeah, but who then cares? it's just you. Yeah, but all my buddies. But you're do picking the it up for yeah. your family because you're a good family. How man. many? Yeah, how many? You know, there's plenty of people I know that get a lot of food. You know, Uber Eats and it's a ton, and then when it shows up, they turn around and go. All right, family, the food's here. <laughs> and they're just by themselves. It's great. There's nothing worse than ordering a bunch of food out and you open the bag and there's like four forks and like seven straws. Oh, and you're yeah. Like, yeah, oh, you're God. like, oh, God. They, yeah. they think I'm feeding yeah. a family. Yeah. But you're eating it all to yourself yeah. and it's great. Just get that app, Paul. I will. Thank you. No, Sorry. don't get that. You used your don't. first government name. Wow, yeah. that's... Yeah, no, he's, he's serious. Yeah. Paul Jeffrey Lambert. PJ <laughs> yeah. Lambert. Yep. It is my full first name. Don't do it. Don't get the app. No, I'm not. Yeah, no. don't do it. I'm on your side. After yeah. all of no, this, you're I don't want to be trapped. Him? No, I don't want them to know how much I eat. Share that data, baby. No. Jeez. Yeah. They, they know everything about you anyway. Yeah, they do. Your yeah, name's Paul Jeffrey I, Lambert. Yeah, you live in Edina. You play MLB The Show, and you like betting on golf. What else yeah. is there to know? You go to bed at six. I know. The, uh, only, the only thing Saturday I don't like I about that is like you, you are intentionally putting your credit card or your debit card on the app. See, that's the only thing I don't like. No, listen the apps, all the apps that I that uh, um, advise Sauce to download, none of them involve a, uh, a credit card. Yeah, the key. free Come apps on. I have, nope. I don't put my credit card in there. Say what? You don't I just to use them to get points. And exactly, then free it's food, all points. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. you can put your credit card in there. On but one specifically, but yeah, the yeah. other the other one that I was telling yeah. Paul about has have nothing to do with credit cards. Nope. And take my credit card. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care either. Go for it. Can I take your credit card? Amazon's got it. Jeffrey Bezos has it. Jeffrey Bezos. God, I had I watched on the flight home the uh, Bo Burnham inside outtakes. Sure. You've seen that, right? Yeah, a little bit. No. I, we got to get that Bezos song. I didn't know about that one. The churchy sounding one. Have you heard that one? Uh, no. Oh, that's fantastic. So he technically then has three different Jeffrey Bezos songs, but that churchy sounding one is epic. We got to get that. Can we play it? Hundred percent. It just says Jeffrey Bezos, but he just sings it like it's a church choir. Oh, fantastic! God, that guy's a genius. He's yeah. I listen to that too. He's How a genius. Weird is that? I think sometimes you and I are on the same way. We're wavelength. not. No, we are. No, I keep so, my yeah, shirt no, 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 on no, no, when no, I'm eating said, in my no, hotel room. He said sometimes. I did on <laughs> Saturday or on Friday night because I was sober. When I'm hammered, shirt oh, the shirt's coming off. Some good's putting on TV. I lay it How around How do you know me, what to watch on TV? Because Mario Lopez tells me. I FaceTime Kel, and I just start just start eating food. Oh, Jesus. Okay, I thought that was going a no. different direction. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. No. Eating alone in a hotel room is one of God's greatest creations. Thing. 
Yeah. That's my favorite thing about yeah, traveling. Yeah, because nobody yeah. will yeah. judge you. If you get some all over you, who cares? And you're you eating know? on the bed because yeah. it's not yeah, your bed. Correct. So. Yes. And that's why you get two beds. You get the two yes. queen. Yes. Because you eat. One's for Whoa. eating and one is for, for activities and sleeping. I do some activities on the eating bed, too. Yeah, God, exactly. yeah I knew yeah. he was going to go there. I was just, just waiting for There's it. There's something about exactly. hotel rooms, man. They, oh, turn, man, you, they the... turn you into the hormone <laughs> or the horny monster. Do you have any more news? Nudes? <laughs> the uh, Minnesota State Patrol has announced its new chef as chi- chief. Chief. <laughs> and it's great. Chef. <laughs> they have personal chef. Chief. Chief. Yes, yeah, chef. Oh, yes, congrats, yes, congrats, Gavin. Congrats to interim <laughs> Colonel Christina Bogojevich. Nice. You crushed that. Who replaces uh, Colonel Matt Langer. What was harder to say, Chief or her last name? Uh, apparently, Chief. Because <laughs> this, I, this is I, a, we've been uh, talking food, all right? I'm a, sorry. This is a uh, textbook definition of pre-reading your news <laughs> stories. Well, I did, but like, I, I don't know. I didn't. Let's just, let's just move on. Sauce, you want to do sports when we get back? I would love to. All right. Uh, more of the Power Tour Morning Show after this. Uh, Alexis is here. Ben Lieber is here. We'll talk about the Masters, the Wolves, matchup against the Suns, and more after this on the pin. Want to chime in on what's happening with your favorite KFM program? Make your voice heard on the Bradshaw and Bryant text line. Let us know what you have to say by texting your message to 64686. That's 64686. Standard message and data rate supply. All right, welcome back to the Power Tour Morning Show. It's a, uh, it's a Monday here on The Fan. It is a tax day, Ben Lieber. Tax day, April 15th. Did you uh, it's taxes? the worst. It's the worst. Um, yes, but I do. I always do an extension. Same. So it, I, I think they're technically filed, but my extension's been filed. Mm. So I'm not sweating it. Well, Sauce and Hawk are going to jail at some point, so they're sweating it as well. Yeah. But for now, you're doing fine. Just tell well, me what not. I owe. Just tell well, me what. Why well, do not. I got to do all this? Tell do you guys me. do all your own taxes? Or you guys my do dad s- does mine. Yeah, your dad does. My your... dad's an accountant, so I'm like, you're doing my taxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my, you can save the money. Whatever. Yeah, my That's cousin good. and uncle do mine, yeah. Yeah. All right, shall we do sports? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Yeah, man. Let's go. I'm not. I'm not. Why are you thinking about your bath? I am thinking about my bath. <laughs> Why is this not playing? Way to go. One of us. It's time Nailed for it. Fan 5 on the Power Trip, presented by All Around Property Preservation. Maxo, the Wolves lost 125-106 Ooh. to the Suns, and the Wolves will be the three seed as the other two teams in front of them did not fold like a cheap suit, and they won both their games. Ooh. The oh, Thunder will be the number one overall seed. Denver will be the two seed. The Wolves' first game will be this Saturday at Target Center against uh, the Phoenix Suns. We don't know what time that game will be. Yeah, the Suns have actually, they've had the Wolves number for the last couple of years now, and just in general, historically, throughout the two franchises' histories, the Suns have definitely had the upper hand against the Wolves. But look, when you look on paper, man, I mean, they got a big three, we got a big three, and then our bench is a lot deeper than their bench. So yesterday, the Wolves, the turnovers has been the main killer for the Wolves in almost all of their losses this season. They had 24, and that's just... It's double the amount that the Suns had. So I, I, we gave them a bunch of free points. Granted, Kevin Durant didn't have the best game, but neither did Anthony Edwards. Neither did Carl Anthony Towns. So I think everything resets on Saturday. I'm still pretty confident in the Wolves being able to get this done. Probably not easily. Probably five, six, seven, maybe seven games. But I, I still think the Wolves get through this series. The Suns have been inconsistent all year, and the Wolves have just... They played lockdown defense, and now that Carl Anthony Towns is back, they can score with the best of themselves. So I'm not too worried about it, but I'm a little worried. I agree 100%. I know Saucy's out on the Wolves uh, winning in the well, postseason. If they win the first game, I'll be back in. All right, fair enough. Um, but yeah, like I said earlier, it's tough to like beat a team so many times in one season. The Suns have already beat us three times. It's going to be at least a four-game series. The Wolves are going to win a couple games. So you got a series. You get to start at home. And we haven't talked about it yet, but I trust Chris Finch to get this team ready to go. He's 
a really good coach. He holds his players accountable. He knows the right changes to make. He's very candid and open in post-game press conferences yeah. about what needs to be better. So um, he's going to get this team ready to go. Wolves and six. Uh, Jade McDaniels is going to be the X factor, yeah. I think. If he can stay on the floor, stay out of foul trouble, we obviously are going to need him to play defense on Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, and Kevin Durant, which is a tall task. And we're going to need him to get more buckets. If he can get a couple, you know, 13 to 15 points a game mixed with Rudy, Cat. And Nas, I think the Wolves can do they it. They just Ooh. cannot get off to a slow start. No, you're 100%. No. They have to win game one. They have to win yes. game one. Yeah, game yeah. one is going to be huge just for the momentum, for the Thanks, psyche Rosie. of the team. Yeah. So, yeah. but it, And luckily, I mean, the Wolves got behind early, and if that happens again, the Suns are one of the worst fourth quarter teams in the NBA, and the Wolves have had really big second half, so... I would expect uh, I would expect the Wolves to to do well in this series. Uh, the play-in tournament starts tomorrow with the eighth seeded Lakers against the seventh seeded Pelicans, and then the tenth seeded Warriors battle the ninth seeded Kings. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm gonna go with Warriors and Lakers on this one. You got LeBron, you got Steph Curry, but either way, it doesn't really matter. I think the um, whoever's facing off against OKC has a little bit of a better chance, but whoever's playing Denver, it's it's <laughs> it's, over. it's over for them. It's a wrap yeah. on them. Uh, Scotty Scheffler wins the his second Masters, his second in three tries. He's the first to win two. Uh, he, excuse me, he's the first to win two. In three years since Bubba Watson in 2012 and 2014. Uh, Scotty is also the first player since Tiger to win both the Players and the Masters in the same year. Up next is the PGA Championship on May 16th. Up next as far as major? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're all in on that again? No, of course. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what would you do with the ghost bet? What would I do with him? Yeah, no. What would Privately you- or publicly? <laughs> Well, in a hotel room. What would Halby do with him? Jesus. Mm. <laughs> like whatever, whatever, wow. whatever that sound was, that's exactly what it goes. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't have. I don't have a good uh, alternative. I think it's fine. I, I think it. I think the reverse sweat is kind of fun. I'm just annoyed. I'm just annoyed that I had the first pick this year and I couldn't pick him because I was going to pick him. You have to pick him. Yeah. Yeah, and I couldn't. How did Rom finish? Uh, pretty much right with Tiger. Yeah, he's pretty bad. Yeah, he's pretty bad. Uh, the Wild crushed the Sharks on Saturday, six to two. Uh, they have two games left starting tonight against the Kings in LA at eight thirty. Yeah, it's over. It's a wrap. They started too slow. They hit a groove in the middle of the season where they were playing better, and then they kind of slid again when it really mattered towards the end of the season. Too many injuries. None of these are excuses, by the way, but just things did not go their way. They didn't play well enough when they needed to. And when it really mattered most, when they had a chance in the final stretch of the season, they lost to the teams they couldn't. And that's it. It'll be oh. over after this week. Zacho? Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's it's a shame. I, I, I will say more than usual, you could lean on that excuse more. I know that, that they hate that. But, like, the Wild had consistently key players gone Almost this entire yeah. season. I mean, Spurgeon was out for basically the entire right. year. He played, what, like 10 games this Correct. year? I mean, it was ridiculous. Carrill was hurt. Yep. Brodine was hurt. Felipe. Right, and I'm Cindy Lauper. Oh, like, she was there. Name a wild player that was in the top six. Brian Bellows. <laughs> uh, he's not hurt anymore. Petey right. Pablo. Yeah, Petey oh, Pablo. Pablo has been out for years. Only the second time in the wild have missed the playoffs in the last 12 years, though, so... It's and we're closer to getting out of cap hell. It's I, I think this season was what a lot of people would have expected to happen with the Wild, not the injury part, but I thought they were on the fence to make the playoffs. That's ultimately what it came down to. They did play worse through chunks of the season than I thought they would heading into this season. Um, but I do think they're a better team next year. The best part about this last couple weeks of play, even once the Wilds playoff hopes were looking slim, and then once they were finally eliminated. The young guys on the team have been playing awesome. Husna Dinov has been great. Ogren gets his first goal the other day. Uh, Volstead's played uh, good in his last couple starts here. Um, Rossi's not a bust. Rossi's not a no. bust. It looked like he was going to be, so yeah. it's awesome that he's not. So that has been the best part is like these young guys have been really, really promising um, down the stretch of this regular season. So I do think this wild team is better next year. As long as they're healthy, you get your captain back. Uh, you get your key pieces to be healthier for longer chunks of the season. I do think they're back in the playoffs next year. But Then uh, what? What do, we do? what do we do at goalie? Good question. Good question. Um, I don't think it's a guarantee Flurry's done. I, I really think he's the kind of guy who could want to come back. Um, 
I mean, the guy loves the game. I don't know many many athletes in hockey that that love the game more than Flurry does, especially for his age. I mean, sometimes you get to that age and you kind of you don't feel your best. You feel you're not playing your best. Maybe you're not with the right team anymore to to win a Stanley Cup. But Flurry, man, he loves the game. He had a chance to go somewhere else, the trade deadline, and wanted to stay with the Wild. So I think that says a lot about you know how he feels about this this team and this uh, and this town. Um, and maybe what the Wild had a chance to do, unfortunately, it didn't work out this year. But I, I don't think there's a guarantee he's done. And I think if you took someone who didn't watch hockey and had them watch Flurry play a hockey game, you wouldn't guess that he's in the twilight of his career. You might right. think he's still right in the midst of it. So I don't look at him and say, well, he's he's washed up, he's done. I mean, he's he still was playing really good uh, hockey this year, um, won us some big games, had some big moments this year. Volstead's going to be, I think, a really good goaltender. Um, so I think there's some stuff to be decided for the Wild this year. They still don't have a ton of money, so not a lot of room to work with. But I think you get a healthy team back. And if these young guys continue to play the way they've played these last couple weeks and last couple months, I think we're in better hands next year. I think if you look at Russo's tweets, like the way he's been talking about, because obviously these beat writers, they know more yeah. a lot of times than they let on. And, and he's been really like... Uh, Flurry might not be done, and, mm-hmm. and it's 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 starting to read more like he's he's coming back, which which might be a good thing. Um, we'll see. Um, but yeah, that, that'll be an interesting uh, decision to uh, for old BG to make. Well, it's summer. hard because once goaltenders kind of hit that point where <laughs> where they're um, where they're too old or too washed up, you, it's kind of like a point of no return. Some players can come back from an off season once they get. Up in age and towards the end of their careers for goaltenders it's kind of like once you hit that point where you can't compete anymore it's really tough to come back from that because goaltending is so much of a mental game it's so uh, consistency is so big you don't always get consecutive starts once you get later on in your career so it's kind of a gamble I mean if Flurry comes back and he doesn't have a good season or starts to play poorly to start the season it's kind of like all right what do we do now but I, I do think he has another year in him if he wants it. It's it's up for grabs. This is the coolest chick I have ever seen in my life. Yeah. <laughs> Me? How, how about that SNL skit? <laughs> so let's let's talk about this for a second because you know Lauren Michaels from uh, from Saturday Night Live historically hates when the cast breaks right yeah, when they crack that was up. He awesome. he hates it. He, yeah. He, he uh, again just apparently does not like it. And, and some of the greats have done it. Jimmy Fallon used to laugh at almost every set. Yeah. Uh, every sketch. Which is kind of his bit. He even does that yeah. on his own show. He, For just, sure. he giggles through everything. So Saturday night, Ryan Gosling broke in almost every sketch he was in. And the cast around him couldn't keep it together. And, and pros, like, I've never seen Heidi Gardner break. She broke big time in that Ooh. Beavis and Butthead sketch. When she first turned around. Oh, she couldn't keep it. She laughed for like 20 <laughs> straight seconds. Uh, Chloe Feynman couldn't keep it together in that. So everybody but Keenan was breaking. Yeah. Including Gosling and Mikey Day who were playing Beavis and Butthead. That sketch was fantastic. Just because they couldn't stop laughing. I don't think it would have been super funny if they hadn't broken. <laughs> I was just going to say, I almost think comedy's funnier when they're laughing at their own jokes. I don't want you to be fully yeah. serious and yeah. like sell me the bit. I want you to like think it's so funny that you can't keep it together. That one worked. Yeah. That made me laugh super I mean, the, hard. The one, the one skit that or the one thing that they do consistently where you kind of want them to break is Weekend Update. Yeah. When they read each other's, you know, yeah. Yeah. headlines. When they do that and they they laugh and they laugh hard, like that's the that's yeah. the best. Yep. But when Heidi broke, like I thought the skit was to your point. I thought the skit was funny, and I'm like, I can't believe they're doing this. Like I'm just like mm-hmm. more in disbelief. I'm like, how do they pitch this and how do they greenlight this? <laughs> like this is hilarious. Do you know what the sketch was, Sauce? Have you seen this yet or not? I have not, but so, I've seen it all over social media. Yeah. So the, the the premise of the bit was they were having a town hall on like News Nation, a town hall about artificial intelligence and the dangers of AI moving forward. And Keenan Thompson was playing a scientist or whatever, or an expert and was distracted because a guy in the audience to his point looked exactly like Beavis <laughs> and he was distracted. So they referenced the guy and he's play, it's Ryan Gosling and he claims he's never heard of this Beavis character. He's not familiar with that show, oh. but he looks exactly like Beavis. So they move him out of the viewpoint of Keenan Thompson's character, and the guy they replace him with looks exactly <laughs> like Butthead. Oh, brilliant. That's a great bit. It was very funny, but the looks, the the way that Gosling and Mikey Day looked were so absurdly uh, like cartoonish that Heidi Gardner broke. 
Chloe Feynman broke again. Mikey and Ryan couldn't stop laughing. It was just it's just five minutes of them laughing at how <laughs> ridiculous these two people look. <laughs> then, it was terrific. The makeup on who's the butthead guy? Mikey Day. Is Can I see? Really good. Yeah, he's got the got exposed the, gums. The, and the yeah. exposed yeah. gums and the <laughs> yeah. constant that, that's great. mouth open. Yeah. And both of them just kept saying, I'm not familiar with this show. I've never been told I look like this person that you're that's referencing. Funny. <laughs> so you I'll get the impression it. when you watch it, it seems like Heidi's seen Beavis for the first, first time. time. Yep. And I'm like, did she, is she real? Did she intentionally not? Because they go through a rehearsal. Yeah. But I wonder if in rehearsal, if Gosling just sat there in his normal clothes just as yeah. Ryan. Oh, so maybe, maybe not all done up. Maybe almost as a, fir- a like a first look at a wedding. <laughs> maybe when she turned around, that was the first time she had seen him. Because the way she reacted, she was not ready for that She was look. not ready for it. God, that was good. That was really good. Oh, man, I love Beavis and Butthead. And Keenan's delivery was great because he's like, he get he gets it. He's he's laughing. He's smiling hard, but he's not mm-hmm. laughing. Like this he's he's so great. great. <laughs> it was so good. And then they they laugh they like talk at the end like that. In not the, really. Not really. Oh. No, they just, they pretty much talk normally except for when they laughed once and then Keenan Thompson just goes they, they even laugh like that. <laughs> Super good. Uh no, I thought SNL was fantastic on Saturday. It's the the the, uh, the other sketch with uh, Ryan that he couldn't keep it together on where he kept whispering I never saw. I just saw the viral clip of the. Oh, th- there were a couple others that were fantastic. Caitlin Clark did a good job. She made a cameo on Weekend really Update. Well. That was a funny bit. Yeah. Making Michael Che uh, look dumb for always making fun of women's sports. <laughs> that was kind of funny. It was a good bit. Uh, Vikings news when we come back. We'll talk NFL draft with Ben Lieber. We're just a week and a half away. Let's see what he thinks after this. Power to Morning Show fan. Presented by All right, Benjamin, the uh, Minnesota Vikings will select, for now, 11th and 23rd, uh, a week from Thursday. We're almost there, one and a half weeks away from the NFL draft, round one. The Vikes have two first-rounders. Has your opinion in the last month or so changed? Where are you at now? What are you thinking? What's the steam? Just where is your uh, general mindset a week and a half out? What are you thinking? Um... Well, I mean, my mindset is we are probably getting, most likely going to move up. I mean, I would say ninety percent certainty we're going to move up. We're going to try, we're going to try to get up there to get you know what they think is their guy, which you know in the in the draft as far as the big board is probably going to be the fourth ranked quarterback. But um, you know, as we were talking earlier, the fourth ranked quarterback actually might be a great fit for the Vikings. You know, I don't know. I mean, Jaden's a great player. Not sure his skill set fits exactly what KOC is looking for. Um, and then it's a toss up between what, you know, this. these are all the things that we don't know is like, how do they really think Drake May is? You know, there is that connection with McCown and with JJ. And, um, you know, now you got, you know, Penix and Bo Nix in the mix as well, you know, down down the way. But, you know, you don't know where they where they stand with everybody. Um, but it sounds like those two guys that I mentioned are going to fit great in this offense. So I, I think that they're going to try really, really hard to package up that 23 in a, in a future pick to move up. I don't know if I want to ask this question from your perspective or from Kwesi's perspective, but what do you think best case scenario for the Vikings is next Thursday and what's worst case scenario? Best case, they can get up to four. And get who? I think they'll probably take JJ. So you think dream scenario for the Vikings move up to four, get JJ McCarthy. That's yeah. the that's that would be I think the that's, A plus I, in I your book that's, a week. I from think Thursday. that's the A plus move okay. for the Vikings. What's if, the F? Yeah. What's what's it what's just wow, that didn't go our way at all. We didn't get the we didn't get the trades we want, oh, we didn't get the players we want. What happens at eleven and twenty three if that terrible. doesn't happen? Uh my fear then is we don't take quarterback at eleven. We take best available defensive lineman, interior or edge rusher, which is an absolute need. And worst case scenario, we can't move from 23 up to get who we want based on how the draft is going. If all of a sudden now... It's, you, are you talking about a, a quarterback like Penix or Knicks? From yes. To move, yes. See, here's here's why I ask, and I'm glad you said it like that, that still um, defense and then quarterback is kind of worst case scenario. I think that's the recipe for disaster big yeah. time Yeah, because 
if you clearly identify either Drake May or J.J. McCarthy as the guy you want, already by definition you're settling for a quarterback that you like but didn't love. That's the thing that sucks about not having Kirk and now being stuck with Sam Darnold for a year is if you don't get up and get J.J. McCarthy or Drake May, I don't want Michael Penix or Bo Nix. And I know you you say you're higher on Penix than a yeah, lot of people are. Yeah. I get that, and it's cool. And maybe the Vikings are. I just feel like, wow, that is really pondering I love that. It's a verb now. This feels like a a ponder situation where it's like, we didn't get plan A. We don't want to draft Penix or Knicks at 11, but we're going to reach and and get them at 23 or somewhere in between 11 and 23. That feels like settling. That feels like accepting an offer from me to go to prom. Oh, that's sad. (laughs) You know what I mean? I I wasn't the first choice. And you say this all the time, Corey, when we talk about the draft and, and your your example hit last year with the Houston Texans. If you are the Vikings and you can't move up and you have to get a quarterback, you have to take them at 11. You can't wait. You just can't because you've got all these teams behind you that need quarterbacks. You just you can't wait. You have to, If you can't move up and you swing and you miss, you have to take that quarterback at 11. Because if you don't, I mean, then you got to wait till maybe you move back up in the fourth round. Because I just don't think there's a way that you could. I think because of how many teams need quarterbacks, Bo Nix and Michael Penix are going to go in the first round. So, Ben, what do you think of this idea? Let's say you don't get Drake May or JJ because you don't get up to three or four or five or whatever, right? And you mentioned take best defensive lineman at 11. Would you entertain the idea, and I'm just throwing this name out there, I have no uh, dog in this fight. Would you rather kind of just go best defensive player at 11, maybe best available player at 23, and then take a flyer on somebody like Spencer Rattler in rounds whatever, and just say, instead of swinging bigger in round one, if we're going to swing, because we didn't get our guy, let's swing later and truly load up on the best player available at 23. Do you hate that or like that, or where do you stand on Um, that? I hate that. You hate that. Tell me I hate why. That. Um, well, a, I think that I think this is a huge. This is a swing year for the GM. Correct. You know, so there there is that human element in there too. There's job security in that as well. And the fact that we don't have a second or third, um, that's that's painful. I mean that that really limits you on what you can do. So now you're taking, you know, you've got a couple fourth round picks. Um, you got a couple fifth round picks, a sixth and a couple sevenths. That's not a lot of equity to move back in to the second round to get one of your guys. And I just think that look, you've you've got to you got to go for it. You got to if you if you're you go have for to overpay, a, you're going to have to overpay, quote unquote overpay. Um, you got to find your guy that you can, you think can be the franchise leader of this team. And if not, and you go for, let's just say, Spencer Rattler or some kid, that kid out of Tulane or something like that, you're putting your you're putting your future and your legacy on one of those guys. Because guess what? This this ownership and this fan base and this organization, we're not we don't want to tank and have a bad year so we can get the next top pick for an, that's that's not who we are. That's not if they want to sell us on this competitive rebuild. Then you've got to go and get a quarterback in the first round. You know, that's hands down, that's what they have to do. And to your point, Ben, they also are in a situation where I know every team knows they need a quarterback, but you also then, if, if quarterbacks go one, two, three, four, and I think JJ McCarthy is going to be the third quarterback taken, I think Drake May is going to be the guy that's available, and you don't trade, let's say Arizona and, um, the Chargers stay put. They're not taking quarterbacks, right? No. Then you basically have to play chicken with with the Giants, who a lot of people think are selling that they're going to take a quarterback. So somebody moves in front of them. So Malik Neighbors, the wide receiver from LSU, falls to them. They just have they have too much money in the quarterback room. When when Daniel Jones is healthy, he won them a playoff game. Granted, it was against the Vikings and their bad defense, but he won a playoff game. So then you have to start weighing where, how far up you're going to go. The Tennessee Titans aren't going to take a quarterback. The Atlanta Falcons aren't going to take a quarterback. But then you have to get into that. When does when does Denver jump? When does when do the Raiders jump? When do the Saints jump? Right. So you have to. You're playing chicken if you can't get one at four or five because then you're just waiting. 
They are going to, quote-unquote, overpay. I still think they can get to the third pick. I think there's enough people in that New England room that are going, man, We're I know Drake May might be our guy, but we're going to put him behind a non-offensive line, no offensive weapons. I know it's the, the biggest position they need, but they get 11-23. They have the second pick or the third overall pick in the, the second round. They could get a left tackle, a right tackle, and a, and a wide receiver with those three picks. They're going to be a top, a bottom five team next year with two great quarterbacks that they could get themselves into. Somebody is going to talk New England out of, into moving back. They just are. They're, Elliot Wolf, the guy who is now the pseudo GM for that team, watched them with watched them all last year. Put Mac Jones behind an awful football team. Watch what they needed when when they drafted his dad drafted Aaron Rodgers. You got to have a team around a young quarterback. You're going to want to put a guy on that team. Watch what happened to the Panthers. I know we might be good in a couple of years, but don't you think the Panthers would rather have the first overall pick Jeez. this year? I'm just saying, right? Well, see, I, that then that's that is where uh, you make a great argument. If Thanks. if the Patriots want to go that route, that's that's fine. But I I still think if you have the opportunity at number three to get a great, what you think is going to be a great quarterback, I think you just do it now. You look at the Patriots and how they were built with all those championships. If you take Tom Brady off of any one of those teams, did they have elite talent around him? No. No. No, they did not. No. And and in the He's reason, also the greatest quarterback of all time. I, I get that, and it's hard. And it's hard to it's it is. It's hard to say that we're going to find the next Tom Brady. We're going to find the guy that has as much leadership and all this other, all the other, you know, uh, out, outside factors. Because Tom Brady, the reason why he felt he doesn't have the great physical traits. Like you're looking for a guy that can be an absolute dog and, and make everybody around him great and, and excellent. If they think they, they can find a guy that's maybe comparable, maybe has a little bit better skill set, all that other stuff. You don't need to have the best left tackle in the game. You don't need to have the best right wide receiver in the game. That is continually what teams are trying to find is the right mix. Same thing with the Kansas City Chiefs. I know that Patrick Mahomes, he's an X factor. But if you think that it's sitting at number three, you can find an X factor at quarterback, he's going to make the whole team exponentially better than one wide receiver, than one offensive tackle, than one running back. So if I'm the Patriots and I feel like I can find a game changer, look, if we can find a guy that can create, move around, uses mobility, be creative, if he's if if we can find that guy at three, he's going to make everybody around him just a little bit better. And then next year, and then through free agency, we start building through what we see out of that quarterback. If I'm Elliot Wolf and I'm the Patriots, sure, I can I can put all this stuff out there to see what kind of deals we can get. I take quarterback at three. Arizona's next on the clock for a trade, and I've you know already stated my whole thing about the Chargers. I I don't think the Chargers want to do a deal with the Vikings. I, it's probably the last team they want to do a deal with. Um, doing a deal, you know, in division with the with the Broncos also probably not going to happen. No. Um, the team that I worry about the most that nobody talks about is the Jets. I think the Jets. They obviously know that Aaron Rodgers is on a one-year deal. They have nothing afterwards. It's a very good point. Ro- Robert Salah is in a is in another situation where his future and legacy is all depend on one year with Aaron Rodgers. And they know after that, if it's they don't win a Super Bowl, if they don't go to the playoffs, he's gone. So what is their backup plan at quarterback? I think they find it in this draft. I would not be surprised if that's another team that we have to fight. In our in our ability to move up, I like when this show accidentally goes full circle. Zach Halverson, do you remember uh, a couple hours ago we talked about how you had an empty wallet and had all the money that you had left in Vegas on Black Thirty One, and then yeah. it hit. That's crazy, right? Yeah, you got to empty the wallet and overpay. Yep, because if you don't, you're going to go home broke. Because so far your drafts have been terrible. Right, if nothing's working, um, I don't think a lot of people have faith in Quazy right now. This is your way to go all in. If it doesn't work, you're fired. But if it works, then you've just extended your GM hood for what five years, right? And drill the quarterback, right. and we're all we'll, well, drill the quarterback, and we're all gonna love you. Zach, seen that calm film. down, Zach. Um, the other thing too, though, to the Patriots uh, rebuild that they need to make because if you look at this offensive line, it's brutal, right? It's bad. They are the Patriots' offensive line is bad. 
You also, though, the, the other thing in the back of your mind, if you're the Patriots, is you say, okay, all right, we will, hypothetically, we'll move back to 11 and we'll take 23 and we'll take next year's first, right? You have to think, we heard this from multiple people, the reason nobody will trade up with the Vikings in the past is they thought they would be too good of a team. You have to think in the back of your mind, well, this team, we know the defense is fine, but the offense with a rookie or Sam Darnold, this is maybe a five-win team. Vegas thinks the over-under is six and a half. That's a top 10 pick. So if you're the Patriots and you do this trade, you might be armed next year with pick 10 and four. That gets you anywhere in the draft. That well, so gets about, you ben, any of those quarterbacks. There are people that are saying that the uh, the price to get up to three or four is not nearly as high as we Correct. think that it is. Yeah. So, so do you believe that the first rounder next year has to be a part of this? Or do you think uh, that uh, 11 and 23 and maybe a random pick this year is I enough? think it's going to take more than 11 and 23. But not next year's first. Uh, you get two fourths. Yeah. I don't know if that'll help, but... Maybe not next year's first, but it's going to be pretty close. Because the, th- the thing is, again, there is going to be a bidding war. Yeah, and, and It's already started, right? It's already started. So who knows Who knows how, how sweet that pot is right now? We don't know what the Broncos are offering. Obviously, the Broncos don't have a 23rd. You know, they don't have another first-round pick this year. So, um, you know, we are. I feel like we are sitting in the captain's chair as far as the, giving the best available package. Um so I, I don't know. I think that, and we heard Quasey say, and he has to say this because it's true, there is there is a, a walk-away situation. Like, there is a scenario where you, the price is too high. Like, we got to walk away. And that's, going back to your original question, that's scary because then you feel like you have to take a quarterback at 11. Like, if you can't move up, you may have to go with a Penix or a Bo Nix at 11, and everybody's going to be like, <gasps> Yep. What, are they, what are they doing? It's going to be hated. It's going to be hated. But the thing is, you can't wait till 23. Correct. Because the Rams are probably going to look at quarterback. If, if the Cowboys, one, maybe. The Cowboys are, going to, are maybe going to move up a couple spots above us to, to try to get a quarterback. So you're looking at first round quarter teams that need quarterback. There's like nine teams that need quarterback. So you're not going to wait. If you wait to 23, you're going to have to move up above. The Rams or somebody like that to to get a quarterback. If you miss out and you you're like, well, let's take defense at eleven, then you're probably not getting a quarterback at twenty. What if we have a guy have a full on Will Levis moment where one of these guys, JJ or Drake or Jaden, somebody that we think is a lock to go top five, just falls to like it, seventeen? It would be Drake May. There's too much steam on on JJ. I yeah. think it would be Drake May. Mm-hmm. So Drake's the one who might slide. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. I mean, that would be. What if we? Got, can you imagine if Quazy got the guy that he theoretically wants? Drake may maybe right? JJ or or Drake at eleven? Yeah, be a home. Didn't run. even have to move up. Be home run. Mm-hmm. But and you just have him fall to you at eleven. You just I, as we've talked about, and we're going to continue to talk about until next Thursday, a week from this Thursday. You have to move up somewhere. You got to go to nine. You got to go to eight. You have to. Because you don't know, and you and you've made calls, and, and the the seat has already been set with all these other GMs. Is hey, if Denver calls you, we have the better package. Remember that. Hey, if the Rams want to come all the way up, and this is their first first round pick since 2016. That's how long it's been since they've made a first round pick, and they won a Super Bowl. So you don't always need first round picks. But my point is, you have to have told all these GMs. Listen, if so and so calls, remember. We have two firsts, and we will. That carrot of that next year's first is always out there. That's another reason why the Vikings have to swing and hit, or swing and at least get their pick, because they have the best package. They can't miss with the best deal. You're a bad negotiator if you miss with the best deal, and they have positioned themselves to have the best deal. Well, and Ben, you said the uh, the walkaway price for Quazy, right? If he had ten years of job security, maybe there is a true walkaway price. There can't be. But if you're in desperation mode, if you really know you need your guy, you just overpay. Who cares, right? Because you might not be here to see the uh, the end of it anyway. Correct. So yeah. you just go for it. Right. What do you care? Well, and the other, the, other, the other thing that we we don't know, and you know, PA's. PA has been saying this about about the Denver situation, but it it could be the same with the Raiders situation. We don't know what player packages are involved as well. Yeah, and that's the scary part. Denver and and Las Vegas, they may say, okay, we don't have as much draft ammunition, but we can offer players that they can't offer. We had Patrick Sertain. 
yeah, you know, there there are guys, maybe maybe there are guys that, you know, the Patriots or the Arizona's like, uh, we actually want your picks, and that guy would really help us out right now. We can't do that. We're not in a position. There's probably not a there's probably not a guy outside of JJ that um that a team is looking at and you're like, uh, that guy. We want that guy. Right. We just don't have it. Yeah, and the only guy on the Raiders that's off limit is probably Max Crosby. They'd give you anybody else. Right. And Pat, that's the 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 Denver guy that PA has on. His take is is that the they may not Denver may not have the the draft equity, but Patrick Sertan he thinks is available in a trade to move up the draft board. That get that I mean he's one of the best corners in the league. That would jumpstart a rebuild. Yeah, it's going to be great. That's why it's the best. Why have we, we have not no gambled idea. more on it? I don't feel like we have enough bets on it yet. I mean, Alexis, do you like draft talk, or did we just bore the hell out of you for the last uh, 12 minutes? No, it's interesting. Okay. I like it, and especially for you know football. I learn a lot listening Game time. to you guys. So, yeah, I enjoy well, just it. just listen to Ben. Ben knows what he's talking about. We don't. We're just guessing. Uh, fan 5 next. Power to Morning Show on the fan.